Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do all things cameras with the dash of vlogs and a little bit of travel. And today I'm gonna to be talking about this monster camera coming from Nikon, the Nikon Z9. So there's been some more rumored specs that's came out from Nikon Rumors. And the further along it's getting, it looks like more things are being confirmed, especially since there's been pictures of this thing at the Olympics. We know it's been in the hands of multiple people. And at this point, it's gonna be hard for Nikon to keep the specs secret. So without further ado, let's jump into these latest spec leaks. And that is that it's gonna have a 45 megapixel sensor that is a stack sensor. Now it's been rumored for a while it would be 45 megapixels, but at this point they are actually saying it is confirmed to be 45 megapixels. To me, this is actually a little bit surprising because I know Sony usually makes their sensors. So I thought with it coming in around the 45 to 50 megapixel range, which is what it's been rumored for a long time now, that it would probably just be the A1 sensor, but apparently not. It is going to be a 45 megapixel sensor. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean that Nikon actually developed their own sensor? Or is this just a completely different sensor that maybe Sony has made for them? I guess we will see soon enough, but if I had to guess, this is probably gonna be a Sony sensor. The next new bit of information is that it's gonna be capable of shooting up to 120 frames per second in a lower resolution mode, which they're saying will probably be six megapixels. And they actually say that they've had some reports saying that it's even up to 160 frames per second. Now. This is absolutely insane. Now, I think this sounds really cool if they're able to pull this thing off. Now, will this be a six megapixel JPEG or a six megapixel RAW? And if it's RAW, then what will the bit rate be on it? We do not have that information as of yet. But I mean, I think this is a very cool capability and that is something that I am a, you know, a Canon fan and a Sony fan. Well, I'm a camera fan in general, but I shoot Sony and Canon and I see a lot of like, Canon fanboys talk about, ooh, you know, who wants to have a big file, like a 45 megapixel file, if you're a sports shooter, or who wants the 50 megapixel file of the A1, that's just ridiculous. The 24 is more than enough on the R3. Personally, I think that that is a lot of fanboy talk. I think that we really should celebrate a company that's willing to push the boundaries and any technology that is gonna come out there that's gonna just drive the industry forward as a whole. Competition is gonna be good for camera companies and camera owners all around the board. If Sony does something great, then it's gonna push Canon, and if Nikon does something great, it's gonna bring Canon along and it's gonna push Sony. I mean, it's just really an ecosystem and the more competition we have, the better it's gonna be for the creators. Will there be another middle ground, maybe somewhere in between like a 24 megapixel image and what will that be capable of doing? I guess, again, we will have to wait and see, but I think this sounds like some really cool tech. The next new bit of information we have is that it's gonna have a built-in GPS. Whoop de doo That doesn't really excite me one way or the other. I'm sure it's very important for the type of camera that it is, but for me, having a built-in GPS to a camera, it, it, Next, the Z9 will be able to use the same type of battery that's in the D6 already. So for pro users, it will be easy for them to transition over. But this will also have a new type of battery that is capable of charging with the USB-C of the camera. So it's kind of the best of both worlds to be able to have your back compat batteries, but also to be able to move it forward and have a little bit of new tech. Quite frankly, people and companies do not wanna spend a lot of redundant money on things that they already have. So I think Nikon is doing a solid by having this feature. Something else cool that this will have is the shutter that drops down when it's turned off and protects the sensor from dust and moisture. I think this is very smart. I really love it in my Canon EOS R that has it. I was actually very disappointed that the Sony a7S III does not, but the A1 does. It's something that Canon's been doing for a while now and it, it really just makes sense and it's just a super cool feature. I liked having the ability just to take off my lenses and not really worry about having dust to get on my sensor. With my Sony, I have to be extra cautious and I just think that moving forward, hopefully this becomes a standard and it looks like with Sony bringing it to the A1 and now Nikon doing this with the Z9, that it is gonna be a new standard and I think it is an excellent move. Moving on, we have some more information about the autofocus. It will now be capable of tracking vehicles along with the animal and human autofocus tracking as well. And 
some really cool information about the low light capabilities of the autofocus. It will be able to focus in low light of up to minus seven or down to minus seven EV, which is really, really, really low light. So, I mean, that's something that is very impressive if it works. Nikon hasn't quite caught up to a Sony and Canon when it comes to autofocus as of yet. So we will see if this changes anything. Nikon Rumors also says it will have improved 3D tracking. So I guess we will see if it actually works. Uh, fingers crossed on that one. Supposedly this will have an improved articulating screen that will also work in portrait mode. We kind of got a glimpse of that in some of the leaked pictures, but it was also taped over. So it was kind of hard to make anything out specifically, but apparently this is going to be a completely new design. So we will have to see how people take to it. Another thing that is going to be new is going to be the locking mechanism, locking mechanism, mechanism, the locking mechanism on the flaps of the CF Express Type B slots. And this is going to have two CF Express Type B slots, which I think is very smart from Nikon. And I think that is a leg up that they actually have over Sony and Canon because Canon only has the one CF Express Type B card along with the SD card. And then the Sony has the Type A or what is it? Yeah, Type A cards, which are cool and they're small and they're also fast, but the CF Express Type B cards are a lot faster and they're cheaper and they come with a lot more storage right now. So I think that's super cool. I know a lot of people will say that the R3 is not gonna be the flagship camera from Canon. And okay, maybe it's not, but right now it is because they don't have another flagship camera. So right now it looks like that the Nikon Z9 is gonna have a leg up, at least in that department, but we'll see how it works when people actually get it in their hands. I'm never gonna have this in my hands because you know, I'm not rich and I'm not a sports action photographer. And you know, you could subscribe and help me maybe like get better cameras, but that camera is never gonna be in these hands anytime soon. Next, it will have a third joystick, which can be used if the camera is very close to your face, which is really cool. I actually thought that Canon had a really good system with the Canon EOS R. It actually allowed you to put part of the touch screen as kind of like a, a pad that you could move the autofocus around. I thought that was a very helpful feature. I'm not sure if pros would use that as much, so maybe the joystick works better for them, but I thought it worked great on the Canon EOS R. Not really sure if it's on the R5, I would assume that it is as well. They also say this will have a lot of new features in the menus and a lot of ways that you can tweak it to match your shooting style, which I mean, that should be pretty much expected at this point, but I guess they're saying it is a very customizable machine. Which is, which is great. I think that a lot of people want customization, especially if it's a good menu and people can understand what they're customizing. <clears throat> Sony, fix it. No, Sony's getting a lot better, but seriously, if, if you could fix it, it would be really great. Moving on, this seems kind of cool. They actually said that you can adjust the sound of the shutter speed, so, I wonder if this is going to be something that is similar to what Peter McKinnon showed off in the Canon EOS R3, where it actually has just like a little speaker and it artificially makes the shutter sound. They said if you want, you can replicate the sound of the D6, which has that machine gun sound. I'm assuming that it's going to be like an artificial speaker sound, kind of like what the R3 is doing. And I mean, it's kind of cool if, I mean, I guess that that is a nostalgic sound that some professionals want to hear and maybe they want to know that they're taking images in a, in a loud space. They want to be able to hear their camera. So I guess there is a, a functional reason for that as well. The last little bit of new information that we have is that it's going to be released within the next two months, but they did say expect very limited supplies when it first comes out or at least till the end of this year. And I would actually say probably well past that. I mean, the chip shortages are hurting everybody. So if this is gonna be a camera that you want, be sure to be ready to pre-order it right away as soon as it's announced. A couple of things that they actually put underneath it saying that things that we already knew. We do already know that it's gonna be capable of 8K at 30 frames per second. I do not know if there's a possibility that it could do more than 8K 30. I haven't heard one way or another. I don't know if 
Nikon's actually confirmed the 8K30. I know they've confirmed 8K, but I'm not sure if they they set in stone that it's 8K30. It'd be cool if it was 8K60. I'm not sure, sure if that's possible, but with the bigger body, who knows? You know, they could probably manage the heat better. It will have 4K120, which is you know kind of expected at this point. If you're going to have 8K, you're going to have 4K120. And again, with the bigger body, more than likely we will have limited overheating, but 4K 120, it drives a lot of heat, so it will probably have some kind of limits, but we're just not aware of those just yet. So also the last bit of information that I will bring back from an older time is that they actually say it will be costing somewhere between six to $7,000, somewhere in that range. So completely out of my price range and out of the general photography people's <laughs> price range, but you know who you are if this is the type of camera for you maybe you have just a lot of money and you want to spend it towards the camera and if that's you then absolutely right on do it or maybe you are a professional that needs this you're a wildlife a sports photographer and this is the perfect camera from you and if it is let me know drop in the comment section below give me your thoughts about this camera what do you think about nikon bringing the heat I think this is great for the industry and I hope it's great for Nikon. I hope this really brings them up on a higher level and gets them into the mirrorless market. And if you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, you like camera videos, consider subscribing as well. And until next time, peace.